that either I get to them or we'll get Jenna to get to them too. So we do have the amazing Jenna Dawson as our presenter today. Um, we actually both work uh, together. We work for Hillsborough County um, Public Schools in Florida. It's actually the seventh largest district in the country. And we work with uh, professional development focusing on technology training and other major district-wide um, technology integration. So I know she's super excited to share how uh, Microsoft works hand in hand with Nearpod. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and share it, uh, or kick it off to Jenna. Thanks, Holly. So thank you guys again for joining. Um, we are going to talk, be talking about how Microsoft and Nearpod can be integrated together. This is Nearpod is one of my favorite tools and the fact that Microsoft tools can be integrated within it just makes it that much more powerful. So I definitely am excited to share two of my passions with you guys today, both Nearpod and Microsoft and how they can work seamlessly together. So let's go ahead and jump in to our session for today. So first, for those of you guys that are not familiar with Nearpod, Nearpod is a great tool that can be used almost as a, a hub of learning. And I really like it because there are so many interactive tools and assessment features that you can embed into Nearpod. And especially now that you can integrate all of these Microsoft tools, makes it just that much more powerful. So within Nearpod, you have the ability to create your own interactive presentations, or you can download um, ones from the lesson library that have already been created and make your own copies or edits to it to meet the needs of your classroom. Then you have the ability to share your interactive lesson in a live paced lesson where what is on your screen, you control the pace of it in real time. And the biggest thing I love about it is that it puts that content directly in the hands of students. So they can be sitting anywhere in the classroom and have access to your content or your presentation materials at their fingertips. And then with those presentations, students can interact and submit responses, whether they're on a variety of different devices. So there's an app for it on, on smartphones, on tablets, and you can also access it through the web or as an app on Windows 10 devices. And then with those interactive features built in, you have the ability to monitor and measure students' results either on an individual basis or as a class that participated in that lesson. So let's jump in and start talking about how they are integrated. So if you have used Immersive Reader, you know that the power that lies within that. So Immersive Reader is now built in to Nearpod. All Nearpod users now have the ability to access that immersive reader integration. And so how you would access that is you would go into your settings inside Nearpod and you see the three little tabs, um, or I think there might even be one more tab on the left, but you're gonna wanna click into the advanced settings. And there is a little toggle switch to enable the immersive reader. So you want to go ahead and turn that on. Some of the features within Immersive Reader that you'll be able to access is students can leverage the text to speech capabilities. Students can adjust the text size, the font or the color to make it easier for them to see on a screen. And the one of the greatest benefits is that it can translate individual words or an entire block of text. So that is just some of the features that Immersive Reader can do built right in within Nearpod. Next, we have the ability to seamlessly access Nearpod with Office 365 single sign-on. So with Office 365 single sign-on, 
Students can seamlessly sign into their Nearpod account using their Office 365 credentials. So once you use those Office 365 credentials on the sign in page, you will be signed in to your Nearpod account. One of the really neat features within if you have a Windows 10 device, um, Nearpod has actually a, has a dedicated Nearpod app for Windows 10. So with Windows, and I'm going to minimize my screen. If I were to click on the start menu in the bottom left hand corner. So I'm just going to minimize my PowerPoint. I'm going to open my start menu on the bottom left corner and I can start typing in Nearpod. And when I type in Nearpod, it's going to and it's not working for me right this second, but when you type in Nearpod, there is a little app and it just looks like this that's in this little white box right here, the little Nearpod logo. And the benefit of this is that students can pin it to their start menu by right clicking on the app for easy access, or they can even pin it to their taskbar on the bottom of their, their screen. And what this does is this helps get right to Nearpod without having to type in the website. So this will bring as soon as they click on the app, it will bring up the option for them to directly enter their join code so that they can join the lesson after downloading the app by just putting in the code and not even having to go to the um, website. And school districts can also preload this application onto their provisioned Windows devices to save both the students and teachers time. Another integration is with Microsoft OneDrive. So with this, you can directly access and save files to Microsoft OneDrive. One of the really neat features with inside Nearpod is on the right hand side of the screen, there's this little notes option. When students click on this little notes option with the pencil and the piece of paper, they can choose where they want to save their notes to. So not only when using Nearpod, can you access your images, videos, PowerPoints, other files directly from your OneDrive, but your students can also save their notes for each Nearpod lesson directly to their, their uh, school supplied OneDrives. And I'm going to kind of come back full circle to this here in a little bit when we talk about how it integrates with Teams. With PowerPoint, you can add those PowerPoint lessons directly into your Nearpod library by either simply dragging and dropping it. So if you have like this example in the in the uh, little video, you can drag and drop your PowerPoint from your desktop into your Nearpod library. Or you can simply click on the upload files option and upload your PowerPoint if you have it saved in your OneDrive or somewhere else on your device. It is important to know that with when you insert a PowerPoint into Nearpod, if you have animations or transitions and things like that in your PowerPoint, all of that stuff will not necessarily transfer over. When you bring your PowerPoint into Nearpod, what it actually does is kind of take a, a screenshot of your image. So if you want transitions or you want that audio to be included, you'll need to add that as a separate activity um, into Nearpod. Next, we have Microsoft Forms. So Microsoft Forms 
can be easily integrated into a Nearpod presentation. So for example, we use Nearpod to present a lot of our district-wide professional development. Um, this helps with keeping participants engaged, and we always have a feedback form at the end of our session. And so this is something that we want our participants to, uh, to take immediately before they leave our session. So whether you're using it for PD or you're using it to embed quizzes or anything like that, you can embed it right in to Nearpod. And when you put it into Nearpod, when, it, when the teacher moves to that particular page or that particular form, the it'll it'll bring up the form right for students so they don't have to navigate anywhere they don't have to click a link or anything like that and also forms is great because it has that immersive reader built in so again any forms can be read aloud to students can be translated and access any of the other features that are included with immersive reader Next, we have the ability to integrate Microsoft Sway. So the Microsoft Sway integration allows Office 365 users to add rich content or those rich Sway documents as first class elements inside their Nearpod lessons. So you can actually add your existing Sways to your lesson or you can create new sways dedicated to that particular Nearpod lesson. So you can access your ones that you've already created by clicking on my sways on the left, or you can create your own. Additionally, Nearpod has assembled a catalog of pre-built sways that cover a variety of topics. So some of those topics include animals, countries and continents, famous landmarks, historical events and figures, and seasons in extreme weather. So there are some specific pre-built sways that, are, that Nearpod has assembled for you to use. Next, there's a few different ways that Nearpod can integrate with Microsoft Teams. So one way to share Nearpod lessons in Teams is to add it to the horizontal bar that runs across the top. To do this, you will need to add the Nearpod app to your team. When you are when you are in Teams, you click on the ellipses on the left navigation bar and select more apps. You can then type in Nearpod into the search bar and you should see it appear. So it would look like right here, what's on the left where it says add a tab. Once you select, uh, when you click on the app, it'll ask you to choose which team you want it to go into. Once you select your team and click open, it will ask you to log into your Nearpod account. Once you complete this step the first time, you should only have to log in once and then you will have access to everything within your Nearpod library. So over here on the picture on the right, I logged in with my Office 365 credentials and it pulled up my lesson library within Nearpod. So from here, you can launch any lesson, student paste to show across the horizontal bar. When you add it to that horizontal tab at the top, Anyone in the team can access and complete your lesson without the need for a join code. So that is just another step that is eliminated for students when adding it to Microsoft Teams. So again, if you add it to that, that top horizontal bar at the top, the students or anyone that's in that team will not need to add the join code to, to be a part of that lesson. When it comes to creating the best lessons for your students, collaboration is key. So Microsoft Teams users can now share a Nearpod lesson directly to their team as either an announcement 
or an assignment. With Nearpod's Microsoft Teams integration, collaboration is as simple as one click, which I know we all love that, saves on that loss of instructional time so we can get to where we need to go without wasting any of that instructional time. So you can access your Nearpod library from within Microsoft Teams and post Nearpod direct Nearpod direct Nearpod lessons directly to your team's page. And again, anyone in the team can access and complete that lesson without the need for a join code. This sharing option allows you to share a session to your Microsoft team in two ways. One way it could be as an announcement or another way it could be as an assignment. So students who see the post within Microsoft Teams can click the link and join the session in a new tab without entering a join code. Another way that Nearpod and Microsoft Teams can be integrated is when you go to launch your Nearpod lesson, underneath the join code, you see the different options for integration. There is a Microsoft Teams logo. Once you click on the Microsoft Teams logo, you'll see on the right hand side where you can share to Teams. So you need to decide, do you want to share it to a particular channel or do you want to create an assignment? So for this example, I would want to create an assignment, choose who I want to assign it to, include my title, my directions, if I'm going to assign any point values to it, a due date and a time due, and any other hyperlinks that you may have. So again, this is once you launch your Nearpod lesson and you get that code, you'll then see the Microsoft Teams integration button. And the last way, and this is a pretty neat um, option, is that once you create the assignment in Microsoft Teams, if you remember earlier when the students have the ability to take notes in Nearpod, it saves to their OneDrive account. So if you were to create an assignment with Nearpod, the students can actually attach those notes from their OneDrive as their, they can add it as their work to their assignment and then submit it. So this little video, the students would click on the particular assignment. Once they click on in the assignment, they see the instructions and the link from the Nearpod that was shared. And then they have this My Work section. So they could click on the plus to add work. When they click Add Work, their OneDrive is going to pop up and they could select new file. They're then going to select the folder that says Nearpod lessons. So this folder is created automatically once they start taking notes and save to their OneDrive. So they're gonna click on Nearpod lessons and then they will select that particular file and it gets added under their My Work, so it, it just attaches right there. And then they can go up to the right, and I know the button's kind of cut off, and click on Submit. And then the, the teachers will be able to see their submission and can review their notes. So a teacher can go into the assignments, look at those notes that the student captured during their Nearpod lesson, and it pulls up in, um, in a Word document. And the notes are attached to the particular slide that they took that note on. And then finally, all of these uh, videos and um, resources can be found at this blog post right here, which I will stick in the chat. So if you want to review. I 
will make sure you guys have this link. Awesome, I think Holly posted it for me already. Perfect. So this is the blog post from Nearpod that outlines all of the Microsoft integrations that we discussed today. So before we open it up for questions and answers, um, I just want to give you um, the achievement code for the Microsoft Educator community so you get points for attending today's session. So I'll leave this screen up and at this time, if you guys have any questions, um, you're welcome to come off of mute or put those questions in the chat and I'll be helped, happy to answer any questions or show you anything that um, you would like to know further. Yeah, Jenna, yeah, thank Jenna, you so thank much you for, so sharing. for sharing. Ooh. We had and someone course, just asking about the free, free version. version. Everything, Everything you shared today was part of the free, free version, version, right? Absolutely. Free is for me. <laughs> And basically, when you talk about the free version versus some of those other versions, the biggest difference is with those paid versions, you get a little bit more storage space. But as teachers, we can kind of work around that because you can always remove things from your library and add new things. And then there's a few different features um, that you can't use in the free one but we didn't even mention any of those today. So everything that I talked about today, you can definitely utilize in the free Nearpod version. Um, so good question about, did you have to use a special service to use SSO through Microsoft? And so no, the answer for, for me was no, because you can just you choose when you go to log in it's going to ask you if you want to log in with google office 365 or microsoft so you would just want to make sure you click that button to be able to sign in through um, your office 365 account <laughs> 